the highest magnification objectives you find on microscopes are um, going up to 100x magnification. But in combination with the 10x magnification that you have at the eyepieces, you end up with close to 1,000 um, x um, times magnification of the sample. But of course now that we do this digitally, in addition you can blow it up on a screen or on a slide and project it and that increases the magnification another um, time. So you need to ask yourself is there a limit to the resolution that you actually can display um, in this way and this is where um, Ernst Abbe's theory of diffraction comes in again because it is telling us um, what the resolution is in light microscopy. And Abby's theory um, gave us this equation that everybody learns in physics um, that the resolution of the light microscope is determined by the wavelengths of the light and it's um, inversely dependent on the numerical aperture of the the imaging device. And the numerical aperture is the product of the refractive index of the medium that the light passes through um, and the sign of the angular aperture of the lens that you're using for your imaging. And there's a limit on how wide you can make that angular aperture for the lens and that determines your resolution. So in light microscopy we nowadays um, know that the diffraction limit for imaging with light is in sort of the range of a third of a micrometer. So if two structures are not separated by at least 300 nanometers, we will not be able to resolve them in the, in the microscope. Now you, what you should notice um, about the Abe equation of the limit in resolution is that the magnification actually doesn't enter this um, particular equation. It's really the numerical aperture of the objective that determines the resolution limit. When light passes through a lens, there are other aberrations that are picked up. So for instance, the curved exit from the lens for the light, of course, results in a curved image of um, a flat object. And in order to correct that, manufacturers are creating objectives that combine convex and concave um, lens elements so that you get a planar representation of your image. And those lenses are called plan um, lenses. A second set of aberrations concerns the fact that light of different wavelengths um, will be focusing slightly different, differently because it exits um, the lens and is refracted a little um, at different angles. And um, in order to correct for these chromatic aberrations, um, there are different types of glasses used in the lens and there are coatings added to the lenses to correct for this chromatic aberration. And there's a third um, aberration that comes from the fact that light rays that are passing on the outside of the objective are again refracted slightly differently from light rays that are coming through the middle of the objective. And these are focusing along the um, center of axis of the objective at slightly different um, positions. And this spherical aberration is the one which is the hardest to um, correct for. And if it is combined with good chromochromatic aberration, you end up with an objective which is called a, an apochromatic uh, objective, which is far more expensive than your standard objective. You can pick up a, a regular, not highly corrected objective for um, 700 to 1,000 dollars, and these really highly corrected objectives uh, can go up to 10,000 dollars or more. Um, so usually, it, a properly equipped um, microscope actually carries most of its price tag in the objective to red and it can be up to a third of the price of a, a nicely equipped microscope.